Motion is everywhere. You'll be studying many different types of motion in Physics 1, whether it's pendulums, carts rolling down a track, or collisions. The possibilities are really endless. You're most likely watching this video because you're taking Physics 1 with Dr. Lane, which you'll use a computer software called Tracker. Tracker works by importing a video taken on any camera, which is then able to track really any two-dimensional motion. For this tutorial, I've used my car as a subject and a drone as the camera. Any camera can be used to track any motion. I started by taping a brightly colored piece of paper to the roof of my car. This piece of paper will assist the software in tracking a point on my car, which will give us more accurate data. After downloading Tracker, the first thing you do is import your video by clicking the little folder in the left, selecting the video you want to import, and selecting open. Once the video has been imported, I grab this little slider and slide it until my car comes into frame. What this does is it trims out the video in the beginning that we don't need. Then I right click and click set start frame to slider. I use the same process to trim the end of my video. The next thing to do is to give Tracker an idea of how big things are in the video. So to do this, you click this button, click New, click Calibration Stick, and to put a point down, you hold down Shift and click. And this puts down one point, and then two points. And I found that the distance between these two points is 6.2 meters. I then zoom in so I can move these points more accurately to where they really should be. Now during class, it's easiest to use a meter stick. That way you can just put your calibration stick on either end of the meter stick and you know that the distance between the two points is one meter. In order to start tracking we click create point mass which then brings up this little graph on the right and also this little track control panel. Mass A is what we're going to be tracking. We can change the name which we're going to change it to Kia. Now in order to put down the point that we actually want to track I first begin by zooming in and then scrolling over to where my little piece of paper is. I'm actually going to zoom in a little bit more. Now in order to put the point down you actually have to hold down shift and control which brings up the little round circle and then it puts down the point. Now you can see the template in the top right and then the match. So what we want to do is actually make this target a little bit smaller so our whole piece of paper is being tracked. Now what this does is it gives us a better fit for our target, which helps Tracker track the subject a lot smoother. Now that we've set up our little tracking point, we then click search. And what it does is it then follows that little group of pink pixels as it travels across the screen. With a distance defined, Tracker can calculate a velocity by dividing the distance traveled by a time step. As the car moves across the screen, you can see Tracker is starting to build us a little graph in the top right. On the y-axis, we have the x position, and on the x-axis, we have our time. Given the very linear behavior of the graph, you can tell that I was driving at a pretty constant speed. With our Tracker done, we can then click Close. In this video file, you can see the Kia is actually facing the opposite direction as before, which is facing in the negative x direction. We can combat this by simply rotating the x axis into the opposite direction, or 180 degrees about the origin. So this has us traveling now in the positive x direction. I can then move my origin to the starting point, which will then set my initial x and y positions practically to zero right here. I'm clicking on my track control panel up here you can see my mass is preset to one kilogram which isn't entirely accurate so I'm gonna set it to a thousand kilograms which is, seems to be more reasonable I'm then gonna let it go ahead and auto track by clicking search in this video I started at a rest but slowly pushed my foot into the accelerator which you can see by the concave up nature of the X position graph indicating an acceleration Moving over here to the right side of the screen, you can see that in addition to the graph that Tracker provides, it also gives us a table with our time, our X position, and our Y position. In addition to the X position graph, we can also look at more graphs such as the Y position, which in this case is just going to be as much as the our little piece of paper deviates below that pink line. 
we can also get our velocity in the x direction which you can see is in fact increasing indicating an acceleration but it's interesting to see that it starts to level off that I ended up slowing down towards the end of the clip we also have our velocity in the y direction which again is just going to be how much that little piece of paper deviates below um, our acceleration you can see is it's relatively constant it's very typical that your acceleration graph looks like that. Now the reason for putting this mass up here is because Tracker can actually provide us with the kinetic energy, which you can see by the shape of the graph is very similar to our velocity in the X. Now that you know how to import a video into Tracker and use point mass, I'm going to show you how you can define new variables. Click one of the two variables and go down to define. Now that you're in the data builder, click add in the data function section and then double click name. For this, I'm going to rename it potential energy. Double click expression and you can use the different variables that are already available to make it easier. So mass times 9.8, which is gravity times y. Now that I have that, I can view it in the graph. I'm going to show it off one more time. This time I'm going to show total energy. Go to data functions, click add once again, double click the name, type total energy, go to expressions, I'm going to just quantity plus kinetic energy. Once again, I can see it on the graph, and there you go. Now I'm going to cover two issues you might face in Tracker. When you import your video into Tracker, you might find that it's upside down. To solve this, go to the Video tab, go down to Filters, go to New, and then go down to Rotate. Here you can rotate the video in any direction that you want. Another issue you might have is that the Auto Tracker doesn't work. It might detect onto random points that you don't want it to. To solve this, you have to do it manually. So shift click onto your first point and then click onto each point afterwards the same way. This might take a bit longer, but for some videos you might have to do it. In this tracker file, I'm going to teach you guys how to use tracker to analyze your graphs. You'll start by double clicking this region in the graph, which brings up this window. You can see our X position graph right there. Then you're going to go down to curve fits in the analyze section. And you can see it brings up by default a line. So we're not going to be using a line. We're going to be using a parabola because that's what this graph is. So if you're familiar with a little bit of calculus, you can see this is the position function. And the A value is one half the acceleration. Now the C value is basically your Y intercept. It's the starting position. So if I bump this up a little bit, you can see that pink line that hops above the data points is the fit the tracker's trying to do. So if I bump it back, you can see that line will hop right back into the data points. Now we're gonna hop into our velocity graph, which you can see is a line, a straight line. So we're gonna use the line function. So basically right here, the A value is our acceleration, which is the slope of the graph. Um, if you don't use auto fit, you can bump these around to try to get it to fit, but clicking auto fit down in the bottom left will automatically fit your graph to the data, but you can bump around and play with these values. Your B value is going to be your initial velocity. Moving on to the acceleration graph, you can see it is relatively constant. So you can see me kind of bumping around these values, my y-intercept with a slope of zero. If you get annoyed of that, you can always click auto fit right here in the bottom left, which will match the fit to the data. This is typically the least accurate acceleration. Your most accurate is gonna come from your X position graph. So this pretty much concludes our tracker tutorial we put together for you guys. Any further questions you might have about tracker, Dr. Lane is more than happy to help you. We hope you found this tutorial helpful. Best of luck in Physics 1 and happy tracking.